Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and let's do another entry here and continue this series. Once again, based on one of your new suggestions. This one having to do with yet another cryptid that was found there and maybe still is there in West Virginia. Who knew that West Virginia is like a little mini hub when it comes to so many cryptids? I've mentioned it recently several times up in some of my past videos. So definitely some good stuff there if you're in West Virginia. This one is a very bizarre creature, yet another mishmash of sorts, and apparently it has at least some known characteristics when it comes to its habitat and its surroundings, how it looks like, and so on. So definitely a very unique creature all of its own. And you're looking at a representation of it now. It also has a very unique name, and it's known as the Bloodless Howler. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated associated with this American cryptid. So what is this bloodless howler? Well again, you have to go there to West Virginia. There's a county there that's apparently called Harrison County that you can find this creature at specifically. And if anyone knows any other specific areas there in West Virginia, post it in the comments below. But yes, it's a creature that's been there for quite some time. In fact, very first known sightings associated with it is at least 1929. It could be that it's even been there before that time period, but at least the first reported sightings started around 1929. And let's talk about now about its physical characteristics. And here's why I was mentioning earlier that it's more of a mishmash of sorts. Basically, it's a creature that is a canine-like body. In other words, the body of a dog but it has a feline-like head. So in other words, head of a cat, body of a dog, much larger though than both, because in this case, you're looking at something that is about seven feet long, and it has a very striking set of snow white hair, very shaggy snow white hair that makes it stand out, obviously, from its surroundings. And it's very, very heavy too, weighing about 350 to 400 pounds, and the most distinctive feature with it, and and the reason why it's called the bloodless howler is because of what it does during its hunts. The idea is this, whenever it captures its prey, it's known to just pretty much suck the entire blood from its prey's body. So any animal that it captures out there within the forests of West Virginia, you'll know that it's been around that area because if you find an animal specifically with its throat cut and absolutely not a single drop of blood left within it, that's essentially what this bloodless howler where it was basically and apparently there's no blood anywhere else too that's how much of an expert killer it is whenever it tracks and finds its prey and whatever it uses for its mouth to suck all that blood it doesn't cause any single drop of blood to land anywhere else as it's killing its prey very very fascinating stuff though when it comes to this and then howler is basically the sound that it makes you can kind of hear it throughout the forest as well and it tends to have a very unique trait, too. Interestingly enough, it was named after a Virginian governor, a guy by the name of Benjamin Harrison, and he was the one that essentially gave it its trademark name of the Bloodless Howler. Now, another fascinating characteristic tied to it, one that kind of can go both ways as far as why this trait is as is, is this. Apparently, ever since 1929, and then, of course, going forward, people that have come around this, particularly hunters, if they see it and they shoot at it, it has nothing in terms of any effect to the bloodless howler. Bullets do not impact it in any way. The idea is that either A, it's intangible, in other words, the bullets go straight through it and it just comes out the other side and whatever happens to the bullets afterward, who knows, or the bullets bounce off it and that's why essentially it's bulletproof or it absorbs the bullets itself. Either way, though, hunters have sworn that they will shoot at it. They've known they've shot at it but nothing happens to it and then they can't find any trace obviously of any kind of blood or anything else that shows any harm associated to this bloodless howler fascinating stuff no because it makes you wonder if it truly is either intangible which would put it into a whole other realm when it comes to a type of animal we're talking like ghost material here or if it's able to deflect the bullets or absorb them and it doesn't cause any harm to it but unfortunately 
unfortunately, there hasn't been any kind of 100% evidence associated with it. The idea is that the hunters that are shooting at it see it so little as it's making its escape that they can't obviously see the results of their shooting. So it's not like they can inspect afterwards up close and personal what happened to those bullets and how they went through it and so on. So they have to go by the fact that it could be a ghost or it could be something else altogether. But that's essentially one of the most fascinating legends associated with this bloodless howler. If it is truly intangible, it's a very, very powerful creature. Otherwise, bullets essentially cause no harm to it no matter how much you shoot at it. But yeah, otherwise, as far as other interesting encounters associated with it, there was a gentleman who said that he was encountering a creature who was only about 20 feet away. This guy's name was actually um, Cornbread, if you could believe it. I guess that's his nickname. And then when he saw this creature... Interestingly enough, it growled at him and then it basically ran away. Like, in other words, it didn't look up like it didn't seem like it was as predatory as it was, even though the beast, whatever this bloodless howler was, eventually was looking at him at a hill. And even though he took out his gun and he fired four bullets, four shots straight at it, knowing once again, as many others have hunters have stated that he's directly hit it, there was nothing, not a single flinch, nothing occurred with this creature and the bullets in his case stated went right straight through it fascinating stuff when it comes to that no as far as again more proof of the quote-unquote intangible status associated with this creature now as far as what it could be in reality like in terms of of uh, let's say real life animals there's the idea that it could be again its own cryptid in, in other words a one-of-a-kind creature something again that can't be classified as any other animal out there and is more of a mishmash of sorts i was reading though another thing that it could be a mistaken identity of sorts the idea is this that this could be more along the lines of an escaped animal, maybe even something like a hyena or something else that out there in the wild just adapted to its circumstances, its surroundings, and made changes throughout who knows how many years. I was even one thing that this creature could be hundreds of years old, which again would throw things into a whole other avenue. I don't think you would have a creature that old as far as it being like 800 plus years old. Instead, it's more along the lines of a continued set of generations of this creature one after the other one dying one being born and so on and that's what people are seeing altogether but yeah the idea is that it could be a mistaken identity just a hyena or something else a regular escaped canine like animal like a real animal wolf something else that escaped and is roaming those locations but just simply became different because of its environments and so if that's the case at least until one of them is caught or at least until there's more evidence on the video side or maybe photograph side that's all we have to go by at least when it comes to that it's a its own unique cryptid or b more than the lines of a mistaken identity but that's pretty much it that's all the information associated with this bloodless howler again those of you in west virginia who know more info on the local level maybe those in those specific counties i was mentioning earlier uh, please post those comments below anyone here have heard this creature i would love to have more evidence on that if you have links to it and I do see people put posts whenever they have links to evidence of certain things on YouTube, then please post away. And then who knows, it, it might have a very blood curdling scream. And that would be interesting to share with everyone too. So, all right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.